couldn't fit my skis into my car so I've decided to build uh, a ski rack out of my bicycle rack basically converting it into a ski rack so I've started by designing it in uh, 3D CAD um, out of uh, aluminum piping these are three quarter aluminum pipes um, and um, this is a half an inch aluminum pipe in the front welded I had them sitting around so I decided to use them these are uh, one quarter uh, inch aluminum plates that uh, I'll weld together to create this um, L bracket and these are also uh, quarter inch aluminum now don't forget to put uh, washers and um, accommodate for the space you need for these washers um, that will prevent scratching of your uh, bicycle rack so make sure that the gap uh, is uh, enough to accommodate so this is two inch in my case so make sure the gap between these two washers can accommodate your bicycle rack and also have washers from the outside to hold um, the uh, screws and don't let them uh, rub through the aluminum because uh, aluminum is soft and it will uh, create damage and definitely will strip the paint on the uh, pipes I'm going to put uh, um, pipe protectors it's the type you can buy at Home Depot pretty easily um, to prevent the skis from scratching and obviously everything needs to be welded I'll, uh, I'll follow through how this was uh, done in the video so uh, let's start uh, going and I'll show you how I started so after I printed um, all the different parts uh, I cut everything in advance and I started by creating the L bracket you, you can buy the L bracket you don't have to make it I just had a bunch of aluminum uh, sitting around and there's no point buying more material uh, if I can just make it so I've just uh, cut it and started welding it now make sure that everything is square when you weld the good thing if you just tap it together um, then you can just kind of bend it after so just give it a little tack weld and then make sure that everything is uh, square in place and so on um, as long as you can still move, move it you're you're good um, and then you can start uh, really getting everything uh, welded into place there is a lot of welding this project it's so because it's all raw materials there's quite a lot of welding uh, it needs to be strong um, and it needs to all be squared so it's it's pretty complex um, welding but not too bad uh, the next thing I put the uh, the pipes I started welding the pipes and it's it's critical that everything will be squared uh, if not everything will be cockeyed and you definitely don't want to have that that will a look bad and, and B will just be very poor uh, job and probably will make your skis sit all uh, sideways um, so as I said I started um, working on the outer pipe giving it a little bit of a tech weld I, I did cut short the uh, some of the welding in this video because aluminum takes a while to weld because you need to build up the heat so um, I skipped it uh, so don't think I'm uh, so quick it, it's aluminum and it does need a lot of energy to weld in um, the second part is uh, putting the uh, second pipe now make sure that the gap between them is correct it needs to accommodate both the uh, the foam that, that um, protects the pipes and protect your skis from scratching and um, make sure that the skis will fit in the gap so I measured that um, and then I uh, made sure that the pipe is, uh, is squared to uh, the L bracket and again gave it a, a kind of a tap uh, weld uh, just to make sure that it will uh, it will hold in place and I will go over all the welds later so right now I'm just making sure that everything is in the correct place you can see my marking there and now you can see that I'm kind of bending it into place after I put everything together and I'll, I'll double check it later when I put the other part um, now let's move to the other side uh, same thing starting from the external edge uh, make sure that it's all squared you see I'm struggling a little bit with keeping it in place and I do need to put some uh, spacer on the other side to accommodate for the thickness um, of the L bracket so you if you just put it on the table it'll be all off so I slide under um, same uh, thickness piece of aluminum 
uh, that I'll be welding uh, later and that's the, actually the uh, piece for the bracket and then just uh, tack it into place and now uh, once this is done I can move to uh, the next one um, as you can see it does take time all these weldings are time consuming and they're they're not uh, too easy um, some of the weldings have to be uh, done in quite strange angles so once this is done make sure again that it's all square you can still move it it's soft it's still just the beginning of the welding and then move to the next one as you can see again I marked it I, I just skipped that part in the video but I'm sure you can figure out how to mark it uh, so you can see those little black marks on the top um, and I welded the next one in place and you can see actually that they are not in the right direction and I'll, I'll fix it when I get there now I kind of took a break from welding the pipes and went back to the L bracket as I said I did not use an L bracket I just used two pieces of aluminum so I have to uh, weld them together um, and that I kind of did on the edge of the table just so I can suspend them on the side and, and weld these uh, two plates together that was actually quite a lot of fun because it's one continuous simple weld so that that was uh, an easy one and uh, quite uh, fun to do and it's uh, as I said time consuming I, I skipped it as you can see here um, and moved it forward because that, that took a little bit of the time to get everything uh, in place so once it's all done you can go to the next step don't forget this is pretty hot right now um, so let it cool a little bit before retouching it and now I'm gonna put the uh, two uh, brackets that uh, hold this whole thing into the uh, bicycle rack so make sure that you leave uh, plenty of space so if your uh, bicycle uh, rack is uh, two inch then you actually need more than two inches because you want to accommodate for uh, this uh, washer so whatever your washer thickness is um, add the two of them and uh, then mark the uh, gap between the, um, the two brackets um, don't forget that you're welding on the other side of that I'll show you that in a second uh, make sure that it's all squared to uh, to the um, rail profile and um, make sure that it's also sitting right now this is a little tricky here to uh, have it sitting and holding uh, you had to uh, give some support using my measuring tape now the uh, disadvantage of doing aluminum is that you cannot use uh, a magnetic um, clamp you know these things that you use for metal that just um, has a 90 degrees and a magnet well that doesn't quite work with aluminum obviously because aluminum is not mag not magnetic um, so again just give it a little bit of a um, weld on the side and then uh, whatever was missed you can kind of bend into place um, and make sure that everything is square before you uh, move forward so you see just a little bit and now you can uh, just fix uh, I made sure that everything is correct and everything is on the other side of this line because the line still have some thickness and you want to make sure that um, your car uh, your bicycle rack will fit between those uh, two uh. and now the other side you need to do exactly the same and uh, that's a little bit uh, hard to reach to as you can see I was a little struggling with that um, it's a little bit tricky to get to and uh, also you will need to obviously reinforce this is a part that carries a lot of the weight so after you uh, tack it into place you need to make sure that you weld it quite well again make sure that the that everything is squared um, that the gap is correct uh, you want to double measure your gap now and even try to put it on the uh, bike rack just to make sure it fits because uh, once you close this uh, seam here there is no way you're opening it um, unless you cut everything up and redo everything which will be quite painful to do um, and a lot of work so make sure you double check everything before you close all the uh, all the weldings 
so I've uh, I've did it uh, I've gave it a uh, little tech weld here on both sides and you can see I had to switch hands and I uh, use my uh, left hand for the torch here which usually I use my right hand uh, just to get to uh, to that part uh, you can't really flip the part because it's quite long so you won't be able to reach the other side and uh, once this is done, make sure everything is correct. I, I already finished all the weldings. I just skipped that in the video. Now for the uh, front uh, pipe, I use the smaller diameter pipe. You can use the same size. Uh, just a little tricky. Uh, you may need to uh, a little um, sand the edges or grind them and give them a little bit of a round shape so they will have good contact with that uh, end. Uh, pipe. Um, first I did all the um, outer pipes and put them into place and uh, I'll double measure everything, make sure everything is uh, squared and that all the gaps are correct because uh, you can even visually see here that the gap between the two pipes where the skis should go are not even so that is still flexible as you can see here I'm measuring the gap making sure that it is uh, uniform um, for the entire length um, I did have to adjust it a little bit and then you can give it the uh, little bit of a weld on the edge there to hold it in place before you close all the weldings so once you're done with that side do uh, the uh, left side as well um, start with this uh, measurement and then make sure that the other side is correct if you need to expand or or shrink that gap that's easy to do at this point and then just close this gap just reinforcing the outer pipe so it doesn't move uh, when you do such small uh, welds on aluminum uh, they are very fragile and they will break if you put any type of force on it so make sure you give it more than one tech weld there uh, now I'm back to uh, reinforcing this whole uh, structure so everything is in place I measured I made sure that everything is squared um, I didn't take a video of that but I used a big uh, uh, 90 degree uh, ruler to make sure that it's all uh, squared and it's all correct and once it was um, I started welding this whole thing so I gave this some um, support on the back side and um, then I, I welded everything you can see that the uh, two uh, um, brackets to hold it to the car are already welded I didn't put it on the video because it does take a lot of time so I just wanted to uh, put all the important stuff to make sure that you do weld uh, from both directions again this this holds your skis so you definitely don't want that to break and it does have the vibrations of the car when you jump up and down after i went through all the welds i took it to the car um, and assembled it uh, where i wanted to be i didn't drill the holes yet and i held it using two bungee um, or one bungee uh, line and then uh, using a template that i printed I um, marked where the holes should be. I had that from the uh, 3D model that I created. And then I just uh, drilled it um, through the aluminum, through the uh, bicycle rack. And the first I, uh, I drilled it using a small drill just to uh, kind of get a um, guidance hole. Um, and it's, uh, it's a little tricky, but not too hard. It's not too hard of a uh, steel that bike uh, rack and you do want to drill it from uh, both sides separately make sure you mark it I, I did mark it on the other side from using the template I just didn't put it on the video so drill both sides uh, first with a small drill and once you got everything correct uh, use a bigger drill to uh, to extend the hole you can see here this is the bigger drill I I measured between the two drills to make sure that I uh, didn't mess anything up. Again, double measure, uh, measure twice, cut once, or drill once at this point. 
Then I give it a little bit of a paint job just to make it uh, the same color as the bicycle rack. It's, it's aluminum, so it will never rust. That's what I love about aluminum. Uh, it's a little bit uh, harder to weld and takes more time and, and energy. But it's light, it's amazingly light, and it will never rust. Uh, now the screw, I actually made the hole very, very tight. So you can easily push the screw through. You have to actually um, thread it through uh, just because it's so tight. It's, there, there are no threads or anything, but it is very tight. And you can see I put the uh, washer on the outside and also on the other side that you can see here. And then I, uh, I tighten everything into place. Uh, use a nylon locking washer. Do not use a regular washer. It will fall when you drive because of the vibration. So use a nylon locking washer. Um, and that's it. That, that, that'll that hold. You see, in, uh, you can pretty much uh, sit on it. I didn't try, but I'm quite confident that it will hold. And you can see it. Uh, and here I, I bought this um, pipe uh, protector, you know, cold protector at Home Depot. They cost like three bucks. And these are the um, one inch uh, size, I believe, or three quarter inch. Can't really remember. And um, just cover the pipes with that so it won't scratch your skis so you can see it and the nice thing about this it still folds with the original design and here are my skis on it so you can put your skis it looks like it's close to the ground but it's actually not it's just the angle of the video i'll show you you can see here that it actually has the same clearance as your car so unless you're planning on going off-road with that you should be fine and you shouldn't hit your skis on the ground they will probably get pretty dirty uh, from driving, so don't worry about that. Make sure you uh, tie them pretty good on the top. Good luck!